Act 1. Scene 1. The Capulet and Montague families have been fighting for years. An argument breaks out in the street. Prince Aeschylus says that any more fighting between the families will be punished by death. Romeo has been brooding over his love for Rosaline, who does not return his love. His cousin Benvolio suggests that they go to a party at the Capulet home as uninvited guests. They will wear masks to avoid being recognized. At the party, Romeo, a Montague, meets Juliet, a Capulet. Prologue The Montagues and the Capulets live in Verona, Italy. They have been enemies for as long as they can remember. From them comes a pair of star-crossed lovers. Their love is doomed by the family feud. Their deaths end the feud and bring peace between their grief-stricken families. Scene 1. A street in Verona. Samson and Gregory, servants of the Capulets, enter. I'm telling you, Gregory, I won't be insulted. If any Montague dog says a thing to me, I promise you, I'll fight. Calm down, Samson. Remember, the fight is between our masters. We are just the servants. It's all the same to me. Then you'd better draw your sword. Here come two of the Montagues. My sword is out, Gregory. Start an argument with them. I'll back you up. Have no fear. The truth is I fear what you might do. Let's keep the law on our side. Let them start it. I will make a face at them. They can take it as they please. Or as they dare. I'll thumb my nose. Let's see what they do. Do you thumb your nose at us, sir? Well, I did thumb my nose. I asked you if you did it at us. Is the law on our side if I say yes? No. No! I did not thumb my nose at you, but I did thumb my nose. Are you looking for a fight, sir? A fight? No, sir. Well, if you are, sir, I'm ready. I serve as good a man as you do. As good, maybe, but not any better. Well, sir. Say better. Here comes Benvolio, he'll back us up. Yes, better, sir. You're a liar. Draw your swords if you are men. Gregory, are you ready? Break it up, you fools. You don't know what you're doing. Benvolio, do you fight with servants? Turn and face your death. I am just trying to keep the peace. Put your sword away, or use it to help me stop this fight. What are you saying? You draw your sword and talk of peace. I hate that word, just as I hate all Montagues and you. Come on, then. Fight, coward. What is going on? Hand me a sword, too! A crutch is more like it. Why do you call for a sword? My sword, I say. Old Montague is coming. He's waving his sword just to spite me. You villain Capulet, don't hold me back. Let me at him. Calm down, you old fool. Rebels! Enemies of peace, killers of your own neighbors. Listen, you beasts who cool your rage with blood that flows from your own veins. I'm tired of these fights that disturb this peace of Verona streets. If anything like this ever happens again, you'll pay with your lives. For now, let everyone go home. I mean it. On pain of death... No more fighting! Who started this fight? Where were you, nephew, when it began? Capulet's servants were fighting hand to hand. With our servants when I came, I drew my sword to part them. Just then, Tybalt arrived, his sword out. He was all ready to fight and would not listen to reason. Then other people on the street joined in. That's when Prince Aeschylus came to stop us. Did you see Romeo today? He wasn't here for all this sword play? At daybreak. I went for a stroll. When I got onto the west side of the city, I saw your son walking in the grove of trees. I walked toward him. I knew he saw me, but he hid in the woods. I knew how he felt. I, too, wanted to be alone, so I didn't follow. Many mornings he has seen there. His tears add to the morning dew. His deep breaths add to the morning clouds. As soon as the cheerful sun starts rising, he comes back home and goes to his room. Closing his windows, he locks fair daylight out and makes an artificial night for himself. I worry, for I don't know what troubles him. He is as closed up as a bud bitten by a worm, for it can be spread its leaves to the air and show its beauty to the sun. If we could find out what is wrong with him, we would do anything we could to help. Here he comes. I'll speak to him. I hope he tells you what's wrong. Come, my dear, we'll go home. Good morning, Cousin Romeo. Is it still morning? It's just after nine. Only nine? Sad hours seem long. What sadness do you have? It is a sadness that comes from love. Or, rather, from not having love. 
Tell me, cousin, who is the girl? The one I love is the fair Rosalind, but she refuses to be hit by love's arrow. She cannot be won by loving words, fond looks, or gifts of gold. She is rich in beauty, but poor in sense. You see, her beauty will die alone. When she dies, she will not have passed her beauty to the children she should have had. Then she has sworn never to marry? She has, and it is such a waste. It means her beauty will end with her, and she has vowed to deny herself love. That vow has made me feel as if I were already dead. Listen to me, cousin. Forget her. That is impossible. No, it's not, Romeo. All you have to do is look at other beauties. If I did, I would only want her more. When we lose a treasure, we still remember it. If you show me a beautiful girl, she would remind me of one even more beautiful. Farewell. You cannot teach me to forget. Oh, but I think I can. Scene 2. A street near the Capulet house. Capulet, Paris, and a servant enter. Montague must obey the prince, too. We should be able to keep the peace. You are both good men of good reputations. It's a pity you have been enemies for so long. But my lord, what about my request to marry your daughter Juliet? Please answer. I will repeat what I have said before. Juliet is still very young. She is not yet fourteen. Let's talk again in two years. Many girls younger than Juliet have made happy mothers. For some that is true, and for some it is not. All my other children have died, and Juliet is the only one I have left. But you may try to win her, pa her heart, gentle Paris. My feelings are not as, as, as important as hers. If she agrees to marry you, I will consent. Tonight I am giving a party you are invited. At my humble house you will see beauties that, like the stars, make the night time bright. Hear all and see all. Perhaps you may decide that you'd rather have a different bride. Invite those whose names are on this list. If they can't come, say they will be missed. Those whose names are on the list, he forgot that I cannot read. I will have to ask someone who can. No. Good timing. Here come two gentlemen. They will be able to help me. Here is some advice, Romeo. One fire will put out another one. One pain stops when another one starts. One great sorrow is cursed, cured by further sorrow. Love someone else and you'll forget Rosalind. Nothing will end my pain, Benvolio. I'm in a prison of my own sorrow. Good day, good fellow. And good day to you. If love May is rough, I ask, sir, be rough read? back. Yes, I can read my own sad off. future. So we'll if you can read the future, give me a can you read words on You're almost page? there. Yes, Hurry if it is in a language I know. Everyone can you read this? Right <clears throat> I'll hold the torch. Martino the and his wife and daughters. The rugs with their heels. Count I'll just watch. Anselm and his beautiful sisters. Widow Utruvio. So did I. Lucio and his brother oh, Valentine. That dreamer's often my fair nieces, in bed, asleep. Livia, and while they do, they dream of Theo and his cousin Tybalt. Now I this see. This is an interesting guest. Queen Mab has visited Where you. Where should they come? She is the fairy who rides in a tiny carriage across men's noses as they sleep. Her chariot is an empty nutshell. The spokes of the wheels are spider's legs. Have a glass of good the carriage cheer. is Goodbye covered now. by grasshoppers. Did wings. you hear that, Romeo? The whip is made Rosalind will be there. Bones. You should go. Her driver Compare her face to hat. others that you will see. Each night she gallops you may through soon think your swan is but a crow. One more beautiful than Rosalind. Fingers. The all-seeing sun has never seen her. And then she gallops over ladies' How do you know? And they go to this party and look at the others, too. Be quiet, Mercutio, please. is not that only girl say nothing. I'll True. the party, but just to I see Fair Rosalind. Which, which are the children of an idle brain. They are nothing but a foolish Scene fantasy. Three. A room they are thin as the house, air, Lady and they change and the nurse the enter. Nurse, this where is my daughter? Is Please call her for me. Direction. Juliet, over Juliet. Now, and we're almost here I am. What is your wish? I fear that we are too early. Mother, I'm here. Nurse, please leave us. No, wait a minute. On second thought, you should hear this too. You know my daughter is almost 14 now. But fate has always steered yes, my true. course. It's hard I'd to still believe. direct my sail. Press on, gentlemen. Strike the drum. I only hope to live long Scene enough five. to see her Scene 5. Capulet's house. Marriage Romeo is the and his very friends enter. I want to talk Two about. servants enter. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how do you feel Should about be being married? It is an honor that I don't think about. We always do all the work. Well, think about Take it now. Stools away. Many Move girls in Verona, younger than you, are already mothers. When I was your age, I was already a mother. I have some news. You wanted to see me? The worthy Paris would like to marry you. 
They're looking for you Juliet, and calling Paris to you in the Great Hall. Juliet, Paris is a fine man. He has I cannot no be here and there at the alone. same time. Cheer up, enjoy yourself. He is perfect. May he who lives Just longest perfect. have the most fun. You'll see him tonight at our party. Welcome, Look at his face gentlemen. as if it were a book. The ladies Study without each cords feature. will dance with you. See how handsome he is. Now, ladies. What you don't see in his face, will see, see no to the dance. See him as a if great anyone acts shy, then I'll that say that she has corns on her feet. If you were his, so get ready. If you were his wife, Welcome, he would share gentlemen. all he has. I remember the days when I wore a mask to a what dance and whispered sweet nothings to a beautiful girl. If looking leads to liking, I could. But just because you want me to like him doesn't mean that I will. Come, Lady musicians, Capulet, play. The guests are here. Clear the floor, Everyone let the dancing is waiting begin. for you and Lady Juliet. The whole come kitchen down, is in an uproar. Capulet. I must go and serve and the I guests. I beg you, please come at once. We will follow you. How long Juliet, has it been Count since Paris you and I last waiting. wore a mask? Bless Enjoy me, the party. Oh, May no, happy nights lead to happy days. It was at the wedding of Lucento. Scene four. A street in Verona. No, you are wrong. Lucento's son is 36 years old. How can that be true? Shall we speak when we arrive, or shall we just go in silently? Who is that lady who gives richness and richness to the hand of that knight? Let them take us for a me, please. We'll dance a little bit, and then be gone. She could teach torches how to burn. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of the knight like a rich jewel in an Ethiopian's ear. She is too beautiful for this world. She stands out like a dove among crows. As soon as the dance is over, I will see her when she stands. Then by touching her hand, I will make my own hand blessed. Did my heart love till now? You lied to my sight, for I never saw a true beauty till this night. I know that voice. He is a Montague. How dare he come here wearing a mask to mock us at our party? Now for the honor of my family, I will strike him dead with my sword. Tybalt, why are you so worked up? Uncle, that man is a Montague. That villain, our enemy, has come here in spite to mock us at our party tonight. Young Romeo, is it? Yes, it is. That villain, Romeo. Calm down. Calm down, dear Tybalt. Let him be. He's not bothering anyone. In fact, that I hear he's a polite and fine young man. I would not be rude to him here at my home. Not even for all the money in this town. That is my wish. If you respect me, stop frowning. That is no way to act at a party. It is. When such a villain is a guest, I will not allow him to stay. He shall be allowed to stay. Am I in charge here or you? Well, Uncle, it is not right. Really? Who are you to say so? You may either go or be quiet. In any case, you are not to make any trouble. And now I must visit with my guests. Are you having a good time? Enjoy yourselves, everyone. I am too upset to stay, so I will leave. <clears throat> if my unworthy hand dishonors yours, it would be like dishonoring a holy shrine. I would gladly make up for it like this. I'd smooth, I'd smooth my rough touch with a tender kiss. Good sir, you talk too much about the roughness of your hand. Hands can show true devotion. Placing palms together is the way we pray. And do we not also pray with our lips? Let lips do what hands do. Your mother would like to talk to you. Who is her mother? Why, her mother is Lady Capulet. The man who marries Juliet will be very rich, for her father is a wealthy man. Then she is a Capulet? Oh, no. My happiness is in the hands of my foe. Let us go now, Romeo. The best part of the party is over. You're right. Much to my sorrow. Gentlemen, I wish you'd stay longer. But if you won't, then thank you for coming. Nurse, find out the name of that man who would not dance. If he's married, the only wedding bed I'll have will be my grave. His name is Romeo, a Montague, the son of your family's great enemy. My only love comes from my only hate. If I had only known, now it's too late. How can this terrible thing happen to me? Why must I love my family's enemy? What are you talking about? It... It is just a poem I learned tonight. Come, let's go to sleep. It is late. Act Two. After the party, Romeo climbs the wall into the Capulet Orchard. Juliet comes out of her balcony, and Romeo hears her talking about him. Take two. Three, two, one. Act Two. After the party, Romeo climbs the wall into the Capulet Orchard. Juliet comes out to her balcony, and Romeo hears her talking about him. He speaks to her, and they declare their love and make plans to marry. Romeo visits Friar Lawrence to make arrangements for the wedding. 
The friar agrees, hoping that the marriage will bring peace between the two families. Romeo sends word through the nurse to Juliet to meet him in the afternoon for the wedding. Scene 1 Can I go home when my heart is here? I must go back and find my world's center. Romeo, my cousin, Romeo. Must have gone home. No, he ran this way. Call him, Mercutio. I'll say the magic words. Romeo, lover man, passion flower, appear to us in the fear in the form of a sigh. Just say a little poem and I will be happy. Just say, ah, me, or say love, or dove. Romeo is not answering. He must be dead. I will use magic to bring him back. What shall I use to cast the spell? I know. By Rosalind's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her red lips, by her fine foot, straight leg, and everything, I summon you to appear before us. Ha <laughs> You'll make him angry. Not at all. My spell is good. I used his loved one's name to call him here. He probably wants to be alone. His love is blind. It is best suited to the dark. If love is blind, it cannot find its way. Now he will sit under a fruit tree, wishing his love were a piece of ripe fruit. Come, shall we go? Yes, indeed. Let us leave, Romeo. Mercutio laughs at love's scars, but he never felt a wound. <clears throat> but oh, what light through yonder window comes? It is the east. And Juliet is the sun. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. If only she knew how I felt. What if her eyes were in the sky? Their brightness would confuse the birds. They would sing, thinking it was day. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand? Oh, if I were a glove upon that hand, I might touch that cheek. Oh, my. Oh, she speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, why are you Romeo? Deny your father and change your name, or if you won't do that, just say you love me and I'll change my name from Capulet. Shall I listen or shall I speak now? It's just your name that is my enemy. You are yourself, even if you are a Montague. What is a Montague? It is not hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. So what's in a name? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet, so Romeo would still be perfect with another name. Romeo, take off your name and take all of me. I take you at your word. Call me your love and I'll have a new name. From now on, I am not Romeo. Who are you hidden in the darkness? My name, my dear lady, is hateful to me because it is an enemy to you. I have heard you speak fewer than a hundred words, yet I know your voice. Are you not Romeo and a Montague? Neither, fair maid. If you do not like those names... Well, tell me how you got here and why. The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and you risk death considering who you are if any Capulet finds you here. On love's light wings I flew over the wall. A stone wall cannot hold love out. Love dares to do whatever it can. Therefore, your relatives can't stand in my way. But if they do, they will kill you. Alas, more danger is in your eyes than in twenty of their swords. Your sweet look is all I need to fight their hatred. I do not want them to see you here. I'd rather die because of their hate than go to living on without your love. Who told you where to find me? Love told me. If you were as far as a, a distant shore, I'd set out in search of you. The darkness hides my cheek. Otherwise, you would see the blush on my face. Do you love me? I know you will say you do, but you might be lying. Oh, gentle Romeo, if you do love me, say it faithfully. Or, if you think I am too quickly won, I can play hard to get and prolong this game. But the truth is, I really do love you. I would not have told you so soon. You heard me before I knew you were there. Therefore, do not think my love is light just because it was easily won. Dear lady, I swear by the moon. Oh, swear not by the moon. It changes all the time. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all, or, if you must, swear by your gracious self, and I will believe you. My darling. Oh, do not speak further. Just now, it seems to me that our love is too fast, too sudden. It's too much like lightning, which is gone before you know it. Sweetheart, good night. This bud of our love, so tender and so sweet, may grow to a flower when next we meet. 
Good night and good night. May sweet rest come to your heart as it has come to mine. Will you leave me so unsatisfied? What else can we say tonight? Let's exchange vows of faithful love. I gave you my vow before you asked for it. Yet, I wish I had it back to give again. My love is as deep as the sea. The more I give to you, the more I have. I'll be right in, nurse. Sweet Romeo, be true. Wait but a little, and I will come out again. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I'm afraid that all this is but a dream. It is too sweet to be real. Three more words, dear Romeo. If your love is true and you want to marry, send me word tomorrow. I'll send a messenger. Say where and what time, and I'll be there. Then I will follow you throughout the world. Juliet, come inside. I'll be right there. But, dear Romeo, if you are lying, I beg you to leave me alone in my sorrow. It's a thousand times worse now that you are gone. Romeo? My dear? When should I send my messenger? By nine o'clock in the morning. It will seem like twenty years till then. Good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I could say good night until tomorrow. Sleep well with peace in your heart. I will visit Friar Lawrence in his monk in his monk cell. His help to ask and my good fortune to tell. Scene three: A garden outside Friar Lawrence's cell. Friar Lawrence enters with a basket. The gray light of morning follows the night. Before it gets too hot, I must fill this basket with weeds and flowers. The earth gives us plants that we can both. The gray light of morning follows the night. Before it gets too hot, I must fill this basket with weeds and flowers. The earth gives us plants that can both harm and help us. The earth is both nature's mother and its grave. What dies is born again in great variety. Great is the power in plants, herbs, and stones. Nothing on earth is so bad that it has no good, and nothing is so good that it can't be misused. Within this flower is both poison and medicine. If you smell it, its fragrance will cure you. But if you taste it, it will kill you. In people and plants is both goodness and evil. Good morning, Father. Bless you. Who is greeting me so early in the morning? Being up so early suggests a troubled mind. <clears throat> worry is a problem that keeps old men awake, but young men with no worries sleep well. Therefore, your early rising makes me think that something is troubling you, or is that you have not yet been to bed? You have guessed the truth. Were you with Rosaline? With Rosalind, father? No, I have forgotten all about her. Oh, that's good. But where were you then? I will tell you before you ask again. I went to a party given by your enemy, Capulet. There, I met this beautiful daughter, Juliet. As I love her, so does she love me. We are as one in our hearts, and we would like to be married. When and where and how we met and made our loving and loving vow, I will tell you as we walk. Just promise me now that you will marry us today. Holy Saint Francis! What a change! Young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but within their eyes. When I think of the tears you shed for Rosaline, I wonder how you could forget her so quickly. <laughs> you often scolded me for loving her. You even told me to bury my love. Remember? But not to bury one and take another. Please do not scold me. The one I love now returns my love. The other one did not. All right, my quickly changing man. I will perform the wedding as you wish. This marriage may prove, in the end, to make your families once more friends. Scene four. A street. Benvolio and Mercutio enter. Where can Romeo be? Did he go home last night? His father said he did not. It is all Rosalind's fault. She's going to drive him crazy. Tybalt sent a letter to Romeo. He probably suggested a duel. Romeo will answer it. Anyone who can write may answer a letter. I mean, Romeo will answer yes, to prove he is not afraid of Tybalt. Then Romeo is as good as dead. He's been stabbed with a look from Rosalind's eye, and run through the ear with a love song. His heart has been hit by one of Cupid's arrows. Is he really prepared to fight with Tybalt? What is so great about Tybalt? He's one of the best, I tell you. Tybalt knows about fighting with a sword. His timing, pace, and rhythm are perfect. He can cut a silk-covered button off my shirt. He has had fencing lessons at the best schools. He is a hard man to beat. Here comes Romeo. Good morning, Romeo. You got away from us last night. I'm sorry, Mercutio. I had some important business to take care of, but it has all been taken care of now. I feel much better. 
Who's this coming up the street? Good day, gentlemen. Good day, fair gentlewoman. Could any of you tell me where I can find the young Romeo? <clears throat> I can tell you. But young Romeo is getting older, even as you look at him. I'm the one you are looking for. Then I need to talk to you privately. My friends, you go on ahead. I'll catch you up later. My lady Juliet asked me to find you. But first, let me say this. If you are lying to her, you will have to deal with me. Nurse, send my greetings to your lady. I promise you. Bless your heart. I can tell you are sincere. She will be very, de- she will be very happy to hear your greetings. What will you tell her, nurse? You didn't listen to what I, I wanted to say. I will tell her that you are a good man. Tell her to meet me at Friar Lawrence's cell. We will be married this afternoon. This afternoon, sir. She will be there. One more thing, nurse. Wait behind the wall over there. Within an hour, my servant will meet you. He will give you a rope ladder. Hide it in the orchard near Juliet's window. I will use it to climb up to her room late tonight. Keep our secret, and I shall reward you. Bless you, sir, but listen. Can you trust your servant? Have you ever heard the saying, Two can keep a secret if one does not know it? I am sure that he will keep my secret. Good. Well, sir, my lady is very sweet. There's a count by the name of Paris. He wants to marry Juliet himself. She would rather kiss a a toad than look at him. I tell her that Paris is better looking than you, but she gets angry. If I just mention him, she turns white as a sheet. My regards to your lady. Yes, a thousand times. Scene 5. Capulet's Orchard. Juliet enters. My nurse left before nine o'clock. She said she'd be back in half an hour. Maybe she cannot meet him. She is so slow. Love's messengers should be like thoughts, which move faster than sunbeams, as they drive shadows over the hills. From nine until twelve is three hours long, yet she's not here. Where is she? If she were young and in love, she would move as quickly as a rolling ball. My words would already be in Romeo's ears, and his would be back to me. These old folks, they seem already dead. They are slow, pale, and heavy as lead. Oh, she is here. Dear sweet nurse, what news? Tell me, why do you look so sad? If the news is sad, tell it cheerfully. If it is good, you spoil it with your sour face. I am worn out. I need a little rest. My, how my bones ache. What a trip I've had. I wish you had my bones and I had your news. Now, please speak. Good nurse, tell me. Calm down. Can you not wait a moment? Do you not see I am out of breath? How can you be out of breath? You have enough breath to complain. You could have told me the news already. Is the news good or bad? Answer that, at least. What does he say about our marriage? Lord, how my head aches. It feels as if it would break into twenty pieces. And my back, oh, my back, my back. It is your fault for sending me all over town. I am sorry you do not feel well. Sweet nurse, do tell me what my love said. Your love says like an honest gentleman, a thoughtful kind and no doubt good. By the way, where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is inside. Where should she be? What an odd thing to say. Your love says like an honest gentleman, where's your mother? Oh, my dear lady, are you really so eager? Dear me, is this the cure for my aching bones? Next time, take take care of your messages yourself. You are making such a fuss. Come on, now tell me what Romeo said. Can you get out today? Yes. Why? Then go to Friar Lawrence's cell. Romeo will be there to make you a wife. Why are you blushing? The least piece of news makes your cheeks red. Hurry off to church. I must go to hide the ladder by which your love can climb to your window as soon as it is dark. I am the worker trying to make you happy. But after tonight, you will be on your own. Go now. Harry to Friar Lawrence's cell. I'm on my way. Dear nurse, farewell. Scene 6, Friar Lawrence's cell. The Friar and Romeo enter. May the heavens smile on this holy act, and not cause any sorrow later on. Amen. But whatever sorrow comes, it can never take away the joy that one minute gives me when I'm with her. Just join our hands with holy words. Then even death might not do whatever it takes. It is enough that I can call her mine. 
Such strong feelings have strong endings and die too soon. They are like fire and gunpowder. When they meet, they destroy each other. The sweetest honey can still make you sick. So, love in moderation. That is how love lasts. Here comes the lady. When I see her light walk, I believe that Romeo will love her forever. A lover may ride a spider's web that drifts in the lazy summer air, never falling. The joys in life are that light in wait. Good afternoon, Father. Romeo will thank you for both of us. I must thank him, too. Otherwise, his thanks would be too much. Juliet, is your joy as great as mine? If so, can you describe it? Say it sweetly. Let your words tell of the great happiness we both have because of this dear meeting. It is richer than words can say. Only beggars can really count their worth. But my love has grown to such a great amount that I cannot add up half of what I have. Come with me. We will get this done. For begging your pardons, you two cannot be alone until the church has made you one. Act 3. Tybalt, a Capulet, who had recognized Romeo at the party, insults him on the street. Romeo's friend Mercutio duels with Tybalt. Romeo tries to stop the fight, but Tybalt kills Mercutio. Romo, Tony Romo, then kills Tybalt. Romeo then kills Tybalt. Prince Aeschylus says that Romeo must leave Verona forever. Romeo spends that night with Juliet, and he leaves in the morning for Mantua. He hopes to be pardoned, so he can return to Verona. Juliet's father, Capulet, arranges her marriage to Paris. When told about this, Juliet goes to Friar Lawrence for help. Scene 1. Good, Marcuccio. Let's go home. The day is hot, and the Capulets are out. If we meet, we will probably get into a fight. These hot days make the blood boil. You are like one of those fellows who enters a tavern and slaps his sword down on the table. Then he says, I hope I won't be needing you. By the time he's had two drinks, he's drawn his sword against the bartender for no good reason. Am I really like that? You are worse than that. If there were two of you, we'd soon have none, for one would kill the other. You quarreled over whether a man had more or less hair on his beard than you. Who but you would quarrel over that? You once quarreled with a man for coughing because he woke up your dog. And once you quarreled with a tailor for wearing new clothes before Easter. Remember the time you quarreled with a man who used old laces in his new shoes? And yet you talk to me about quarreling. If I quarreled as much as you, my life would not last more than another hour. You said it, not I. Look out, here come the Capulets. Who cares? They don't scare me. Good day, gentlemen. May I have a word? Just a word? How about a word and a slash of your sword? All I need is an excuse. Give me one. Make up your own excuse. You are one of Romeo's group. Group? Oh, so you think we're a group of musicians? I will give you something to dance to. We are out in public space. You should either go somewhere private or break it up. Here, everyone is looking at us. I do not care who is looking at us. I will not move to please any man, not I. Here is the man I was looking for. Good afternoon. Romeo, you are a villain. Tybalt, I would rather be your friend than your enemy. I am not a villain. I can see that you do not know me. You insulted our family last night. Now turn and draw! I do not mean to insult anyone. I like your family more than you could know. So, good Tybalt, please calm down. What are you saying, Romeo? If Tybalt wants to fight, I will give it to him. I am ready for you. Stop! Remember what the prince said. No more fighting on the streets of Verona. Stop, Tybalt. Good. Mercutio. Ah! I am hurt. I think I am dying. It is a scratch, but it is enough. I need a doctor. Courage, Mercutio. It does not look bad. No. It is not as deep as a well, nor is it as wide as a door, but it is enough. It will do. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. I am not long for this world. A plague on both your houses. Why did you come between us? He was going under your arm. I thought I was doing the right thing. Help me into a house, Benvolio, or I shall faint. They've made worms meat of me. This has all happened because of me, Tybalt. 
My relative, for the past hour, oh, Juliet, your beauty has made me weak. Oh, Romeo, brave Marcuccio is dead. This black day is, I fear, just the beginning. More sorrow will come of this. Here comes the angry Tybalt again. Tybalt is alive and Mercutio is dead. Tybalt, Mercutio's soul is waiting above us. Either you or I or both must go with him. Romeo, you must leave. People are coming. Tybalt is dead. The prince will have you put to death if you are caught. Get going. Run. Where is the man who killed Mercutio? Tybalt, that murderer, which way did he go? Tybalt lies there on the ground. Romeo killed him after he killed Marcuccio. Tybalt started it all by picking a fight. Romeo tried to calm him down, but it did not work. Marcuccio tried to defend Romeo, but was killed. Romeo, in anger, then fought with Tybalt. When Tybalt fell, Romeo turned and fled. If this is not the truth, then let me die. He is a relative of Romeo's, so he is lying to save Romeo's life. About twenty men fought against Tybalt. Romeo killed him, so Romeo must not live. Yes, but Romeo killed Tybalt. But Tybalt killed Mercutio. Who pays for that? Not Romeo, Prince. He did what the law would have done. Tybalt had it coming. Romeo should not have taken the law into his own hands. So he must leave Verona. If he is seen here again, then that hour will be his last. Mercy is as bad as murder if it pardons the killer. Scene 2. Capulet's Orchard. Juliet enters. If only the sunset would come sooner, close your curtain darkness of night, and let true lovers meet unseen. Cover my blushing cheeks with your dark cloak. If love is blind, it best agrees with night. Come night, come Romeo, my day and night. You will make the darkness seem whiter than new snow upon a blackbird's back. Come gentle night, come loving night, give me my Romeo. When he shall die, take him and cut him out in the little stars. He will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no attention to the bright sun. Oh, I have bought the house of love, but not yet lived in it. Will this day never end? I am like a child the night before a party who cannot yet wear the new party clothes. Oh, here comes my nurse. Now, nurse, what news? He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. It is all over, my lady. He is gone. Was heaven that jealous of us? Whoever would have thought it? Romeo? Tell me, how did Romeo die? I saw the wound with my own eyes. A terrible sight. The body was pale as ashes. Oh, my heart breaks. Tybalt, I cannot believe you are dead. What are you saying? Tybalt and Romeo are both dead? My dear cousin and my dear husband? Let the trumpets sound the end of the world. For who could live if those two are gone? Tybalt is gone and Romeo must leave. Romeo, who killed him, has been sent away. Romeo killed Tybalt? Yes, that is what I have been saying. Oh, the heart of a serpent, devil looking like an angel, evil, evil posing as good. Oh, that such evil could live in such beauty. All men are liars. All of them are evil. Shame on Romeo. How dare you say that of my husband? What a beast I was to think the worst. You would speak well of the man who killed your hus your cousin? Would I speak ill of the man who is my husband? My poor Romeo, who will clear your name when even your own wife can believe the worst? Back foolish tears, my husband lives. Tybalt wanted to kill him and Tybalt is dead. I should be glad. Why am I weeping then? Tybalt's death is bad enough, but Romeo being sent away is much worse. Your family weeps over Tybalt's body. Do you want to join them? I can take you there. Are they crying for Tybalt? My eyes, their, my tears will fall when their eyes are dry. But I will cry for Romeo. I will go to my wedding bed now. Death, not Romeo, will be my husband. Go to your room. I will, I will find Romeo and bring him here. I know where he is. He is hiding in Friar Lawrence's cell. I will find him and give him this ring. Ask him to come and say his last farewell. Scene 3. Friar Lawrence's cell. Friar Lawrence enters. Romeo, come here. It seems as if everything bad has happened to you. Father, what news do you have? You will be glad to hear it. The prince has spared you, but you must leave Verona. Leave Verona? That is worse than death. 
Do not worry, the world is a big place. There is no world but Verona for me. My whole life is here. You should be glad. By law, you should be put to death. The prince taking your side is sparing your life. This is an act of mercy. Don't you see that? It is torture, not mercy. Heaven is here, where Juliet lives. Every cat, every dog, and little mouse that lives here in heaven can look at her, but not Romeo. I am sent away. I would rather be dead. You poor, foolish man, listen to me! You are luckier than you know! Don't talk of things you do not know. If you were young as I and loved Juliet, you could talk. If after being married an hour, you had killed her cousin and you were sent away, then you could say something. As it is... Hide, Romeo. Someone knocks. I will not hide from anyone. Listen to that knocking. Who is there? Romeo, go. Hide in my study. I'm coming! What is it? Let me in. Lady Juliet sent me. Welcome, then. Oh, Father, tell me. Where is Romeo? On the floor. Drunk on his own tears. Oh, he is acting the same way as Juliet. Blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up, stand up, be a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Did you speak of Juliet? How is she? Does she think I am a murderer? What does she say about all of this? She says nothing, sir. She only weeps. Then she falls down and calls out your name. As if my name has murdered her, just as my hand murdered her cousin. Where in my body does my name lie? Tell me, so I can cut it out. Calm down! If you kill yourself, you will kill your wife. You are one now. Think! You are too smart to act like this. Tybalt wanted to kill you, but you killed him. The prince was kind to you and will let you live. You should be happy. Juliet loves you. Go to her as you promised. Climb to her room. Stay the night and comfort her. Leave before morning and go to Mantua. Stay there until we can find the right time to announce your marriage. Then we can beg pardon of the prince. We will call you back with a hundred thousand times more joy than you feel now. Go now. Nurse, tell Juliet to hurry her family off to bed. Their sorrow for Tybalt should make that easy. Romeo is coming. I will tell Juliet the news. I feel better knowing I will see Juliet. Remember to leave before dawn. Go to Mantua and wait. From time to time, I will send your servant to you with news. Give me your hand. It is late. Farewell. If not for the great joy that I go to, I would be sad to leave your kind company. Farewell. Scene 4, The Capulet House. Capulet, Paris, and Lady Capulet enter. We have not had time to talk to Juliet about your wish to marry her. She's been crying over Tybalt, as we all have been. Well, we were born to die. I'm sorry about what happened. This is not the best time to speak of love. Good night. Give my best to your daughter. I will talk to her tomorrow. Tonight, she is shut up with her sorrow. I think it'd be a good idea that you marry Juliet soon. In this matter, I believe that she will do as I think best. Wife, tell Juliet that in three days she will be married to this noble count. We will have a small wedding. Considering the fact of Tybalt's recent death, Farewell, my lord. It is very, very late, that we may call it early very soon. Good night. Scene 5. Capulet's Orchard. Romeo and Juliet enter. They stand at the window on the balcony. Do not leave yet. It is still night time. That bird was the nightingale and not the lark. I heard the lark announce the morning. No nightingale. See the light on the east. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. That light is not daylight. I know it. Please stay a while longer. You know that I would rather stay than go. Let me be put to death. I will be happy if that is what you wish. I will say that the light is not the morning, but just the light of the moon. Come, death, and welcome. Juliet wills it so. Speak to me, Juliet. It is not yet day. Yes, it is day. You must go. It is the lark after all. It is getting lighter. The lighter it gets, the darker our problems are. Your mother is coming to your room. It is morning already. Be careful. Look about. Window, let day in and let life out. 
Farewell. One kiss, and I'll leave. Are you gone, my love, my friend? I must hear from you every day. Farewell. I will send word soon. Do you think we will ever meet again? Of course I do. All our sorrow now will give us something to talk about later. Oh, I have a terrible feeling about this. I see you there on the ground as if you were dead in the bottom of a tomb. Either my eyesight fails me or you look pale. My love, you look pale too. It is our sorrow that causes it. Goodbye. Oh, fate sent him back to me soon. Hello, Juliet. Are you up? You don't look well. What is wrong? Are you still crying over Tybalt's death? All your tears will not bring him back. Try to stop crying. Some grief shows your love, but too much grief makes you look foolish. I have some news to bring you, Joy, daughter. Joy is welcome at such a sad time. What's the news, mother? Well, child, your loving father has arranged for you a happy day. Three days from now, the noble power shall make you a happy bride. Oh, no, he will not. What is the big hurry? Why would I marry a man before he has courted me? Please tell my father that I will not marry yet. And when I do, I swear it shall be Romeo, whom I know you hate. Never Paris. Here comes your father now. Tell him yourself and see how he takes it. Why are you crying, my dear? My wife, have you not told her the good news? I have, but she says no. What do you mean, she says no? She should be thanking us. She should be proud to marry such a fine man as Paris. Thank you for your concern, but I am not interested in marrying Paris. I will not hear this. You will go to that wedding or I will drag you there. Father, I beg you on my knees, listen. Not another word. You are too excited, excited? dear. Excited? I am furious. Day and night, hour by hour, minute by minute, I have tried to, all I have tried to do is find you a good match. And now Paris wants to marry her, and she says no! I tell you this, Juliet. Marry Paris, or leave this house. Hang, beg, starve, die in the streets! I will cut you out of my will, you can be sure of that! Think about it. I will not change my mind. Is there no pity for me? Dearest mother, put this marriage off for a week, for a month, if you do not. Make the bridal bed in the tomb where Tybalt lies. Quiet! I have nothing to say. Do what you like. I am through with you. Oh, God. Oh, nurse, what can I do? My husband is alive. My vows have been taken. What is your advice? Say something. All right, I will. Romeo is in Mantua. He will probably never be able to come back. Paris is a lovely gentleman. Romeo is nothing compared to him. Be smart. Mary Paris. Are you speaking from your heart? And from my soul, too. I mean it. All right. You have been a real comfort. Tell my mother that I am sorry for upsetting my father. Tell her that I have gone to see Friar Lawrence and to make my confession. I will. You are doing the right thing. Nurse, how could you, you wicked woman? What kind of advice was that? Break my marriage vows to Romeo? Well, you will share no more of my secrets. From now on, I will trust only the friar. If all else fails, I hope I have the strength to die. Act 4. Friar Lawrence is talking with Paris about his upcoming marriage to Juliet when Juliet arrives. After Paris leaves, Friar Lawrence tells Juliet his plan for getting her out of the wedding. She agrees to go along with the plan, even though it is dangerous. On Thursday. That is so soon. It was Lord Capulet's idea. It is fine with me. But you don't know how Juliet feels. This is not right. I don't like it. She cries so much over Tybalt's death that I had not had a chance to court her. Her father thinks it's strange for her to cry so much. He hopes our marriage will stop her tears. Look! Here is Juliet now. I'm happy to see you, future wife. That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. There is no maybe about it, love. It must be. What must be shall be. Your eyes are red, my dear. You look as if you've been crying. That should come as no surprise. Are you free now, father, or should I come back later? I can see you now. Paris, Juliet and I must speak alone. Then I will see you on our wedding day. 
Oh, friar, shut the door, and then cry with me. Past hope, past cure, past help. Juliet, I already know what is going on. I hear that you must marry Paris in two days. Friar, don't say that you heard about it without telling me what to do. If you, in all your wisdom, cannot help me, then I'll kill myself with this knife. God joined my heart and Romeo's. You joined our hands. Before my hand is joined to Paris, I shall use this knife to prevent it. So after all your years of experience, give me some good advice and say it quickly, or I promise you I will end this matter myself. Hold on, my child. I have a plan. It is as desperate as the situation you are in, but I think it will work. If you would dare to kill yourself, then it is likely that you would dare to pretend to do it. If you have the courage, I'll give you a way out of this. Rather than marry Paris, I would leap from the highest tower, or become a thief, or lie down with snakes, chain me with roaring bears, hide me every night in a tomb. I would do any of these things without fear to live as a faithful wife to my sweet love. All right, then. Go home. Be merry. Say that you will marry Paris. Tomorrow night, take this small bottle and swallow the liquid that is in it. Soon, a feeling will run through all your veins of cold and heavy sleep. No warmth or breath or pulse will show that you are alive. The roses in your lips and cheeks shall fade to ash. Your eyes will close as if you are dead. You will stay in this state for 42 hours, and then awake, as if from a pleasant sleep. When your nurse comes to wake you for the wedding, you will look dead. Then, as is the custom in our country, you will be dressed in your best clothes and carried to the family tomb. Meanwhile, I'll send a message to Romeo. He will come here, and he and I will be there when you awake. That very night... Romeo will take you to Mantua. This plan will save you from marrying Paris, but only if you are brave enough to do it. Give the potion to me. I'm not afraid. Here then. Take it. I'll let Romeo know the plan. Love, give me strength. Farewell, father. Invite the guests on this list. Hire twenty good cooks. You'll have no bad ones, sir. I'll test them by having them lick their fingers. What kind of a test is that? Well, sir, a bad cook would not do it, so anyone who will not, will not get the job done. Go, be gone. We have so much to do. Has Juliet gone to see Friar Lawrence? Yes, indeed. Maybe he can talk some good sense into her. She's such a stubborn, good-for-nothing girl. Look at that smile on her face. Well, now, my stubborn one... What did the friar tell you? He said that I should beg your pardon and promise to do whatever you say. Pardon me, I beg you. From now on, I am happy to do as you say. I'm glad to hear that, my dear. This is as it should be. Now stand up. Send for Paris. Tell him about this. You two can be wed tomorrow morning instead of in two days. Nurse, will you come to my room? Help me choose some clothes for tomorrow. I will take care of all of the details. I will tell Paris myself about the change in plans. My heart feels wonderfully light to see this great change in Juliet. Yes, these clothes are the best. Dear nurse, please leave me alone for the rest of the night. I must pray to God to smile on me on this big day. You know that I am stubborn and full of sin. Do you need my help? No, mother. We have chosen the clothes that are best for tomorrow's wedding. So, if you please, let me be now left alone. I am sure that you and the nurse have much to do pre to prepare for the wedding. Good night, my dear. Get some rest. You have a big day tomorrow. Farewell. Only God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint, cold fear going through my veins. It almost freezes me to death. I'll call them back to comfort me. Nurse! What could she do to help me? This is a grim act that I must do alone. Come, little bottle. But what if this mixture does not work at all? Shall I be married then, tomorrow morning? No, no. This shall prevent it. You lie there in case I need you later. What if this is a poison given to me by the friar in order to kill me? Perhaps he did wrong by marrying me to Romeo and does not want anyone else to know. I fear it could be so, and yet I think it cannot. 
He has always proved to be a good man. But what if I wake up in a tomb alone before Romeo comes to save me? That is a frightening thought. Would I not then be suffocated in the tomb and die before Romeo gets there? Or, if I live, I would be there in the dark in that terrible place full of bones of all my dead ancestors. I would be there where Tybalt, just buried, lies rotting. If I wake up in that tomb alone, I might go mad. Oh, look. I think I see Tybalt's ghost looking for Romeo, the man who killed her with a sword. Stop, Tybalt, stop! Romeo, this drink will bring me closer to you. I drink to you. Here, take these keys. Uh, get more spices from the pantry, nurse. They need more dates and quinces to make the pastries, too. Come on, hurry up. It's three in the morning already, and we still have much to do. Nurse, make sure there's enough cooked meat. Get out of here, you house husband. Why don't you go to bed and let us do this? You'll be sick tomorrow if you don't get some rest. That is not true. I've been up all night before without, without a good as reason as this, and I never got sick from it. Yes, you chased women in your time, but I keep an eye on you now. She's a jealous one, a jealous one. What do you have there? Things for the cook, sir, but I don't know what. Then hurry, hurry! Go and wake Juliet. Go and help her get ready. I hear Paris arriving with the musicians as he promised. Hurry, nurse! The bridegroom is here already. Hurry, I said! Juliet, Juliet. What are you, fast asleep? Why, my lamb, my lady. Come on now. Don't be such a sleepy head. What? Not a word? My goodness, how soundly she sleeps. I'll have to wake her. Madam, madam, madam. If Paris finds you in bed, he'll wake you up. What, dressed in your clothes and asleep? What is wrong with you? Lady, lady, lady. Alas, alas. Help, help. My lady's dead. Oh, I regret the day that I was ever born. My lord, my lady. What is all this noise? Look, look. Oh, what a terrible day. Oh, no, oh, no. My child, my only life. Wake up or I will die with you. Help, help, call for help. Shame on you. Bring Juliet, her future husband has arrived. She's dead, dead and gone. I can hardly believe it. What? Let me see her. Oh, she's cold. Her heart is not beating. Life has long since passed from her lips. Death lies on her like an early frost upon the sweetest flower in all the field. Oh, a sorrowful day. Oh, time of great grief. Death that has taken her to make me cry, ties up my tongue and will not let me speak. Is the bride ready to go to church? Ready to go, but never to return. O oh, son, the night before your wedding day, death has slept with your wife. Death is my son-in-law, death is my heir. He's married my daughter. I will die and leave him all. All is death's. Have I been waiting so long for this day? Only to see a sight like this? Cursed, unhappy, awful day. The worst hour that time has ever seen. An only child, one poor and loving child. The only reason I had any joy in life. Cruel death has snatched her from my sight. Oh, woe. Oh, woeful, woeful day. The most woeful day I have ever seen. Never was seen so black a day as this. Oh, woeful day. Oh, woeful day. I am deceived. Wrong. Killed, deceived by death at its most cruel. Oh, love, oh, life. Not robbed of life, but robbed of love by death. Oh, time, why come you now to destroy our happiness? Alas, my child is dead, and with my child all my joys are buried. Quiet, everyone, for shame. Let us think about what has happened here. Try to see that when Juliet was alive, you and Heaven shared her. Now, Heaven has all of her. She has gone to a better place. Dry your tears and put funeral flowers on this beautiful body. Then, as the custom is, dress her in her finest clothes and carry her to church. Remember that even though you want to cry, you have more reason to be happy for her. Everything we had for the wedding, 
must now be for a funeral. The wedding banquet will be a funeral meal. The marriage songs will be sorrowful dirges. The bridal flowers will be buried with her body. Change everything to the opposite. Sir, please go in. And go, madam, with him. And go, Sir Paris. Everyone, prepare to follow fair Juliet to her grave. Well, let's pack up our pipes and be gone. Dear good fellows, yes, pack up. You know this is a case for sorrow. Yes, you are right, but this case can be mended. Play heart's ease. Why heart's ease? Because my hound heart is playing. My heart is full of woe. Play something merry to cheer me up. And what will you give us? I will not give you any money, if that's what you think. But if you don't play a happy song for me, I might cut you with this knife. Put that knife away. Don't be ridiculous. All right. Then I'll cut you with my sharp wit. Here's a question for you. Why is music sometimes called silver sound? Because music like silver has a sweet sound. Good answer, but it's wrong. Music has a silver sound because musicians never get any gold for playing it. What a pain in my neck he is. Forget him, Jack. Let's stay here for a while. While the mourners return, we can get a free meal. Act 5. Romeo's servant brings him word that Juliet is dead, and Romeo sets out for Verona. Romeo finds Paris at the Capulet tomb and kills him. Romeo then kisses Juliet, drinks some poison, and dies. The friar arrives just as Juliet is waking up. He tries to get her to leave, but she won't go. The friar leaves, and Juliet kills herself with Romeo's dagger. When the families find out what has happened, they agree to end their fighting. Scene 1. Last night I had a dream that Juliet found me lying dead. A strange dream that allows a dead man to think. And then she kissed me, and, and I woke up and became a king. How sweet is true love, when even its dreams are so rich in joy. Hello, Balthazar. What news do you have? How is Juliet? How is my father? How is Juliet? I ask you that again, because nothing can be wrong if she is well. Then she is well, and nothing is wrong. Her soul is in heaven. I saw her put to rest, and came here right away to tell you. Is this true? Then I defy you stars. I will leave for Verona tonight. I beg you, sir, be patient. You look pale and wild as if you might do something dangerous. Don't worry. Leave me now. And go hire some horses so I can go. Do you have any letters to me from Friar? No, my good sir. It does not matter now. Send those horses. I'll meet you later. Well, Juliet... I shall lie by your side tonight. Let's see, how shall I join you? I remember a druggist who lives, who lives around here. I, I saw him the other day, gathering herbs. He was wearing tattered clothes. He must be poor. He looked worn out and, and thin. When I saw how poor he looked, I thought, if anyone needed some poison, this man would probably sell it. Even though the penalty for selling it is death, he is so desperate, he might do it anyway. As I remember it, this is the house. Hey, there, a uh, druggist. Who is shouting out there? Come here, sir. Here are 40 gold coins. Let me have some fast-acting poison. I want some that will cause the breath to leave the body as fast as gunpowder fired from a cannon. I have drugs like that, but it is against the law to sell them. I would be put to death if anyone found out. Are you so afraid to die? You look as if you are ready to starve to death. <laughs> Your need and suffering show in your eyes. Go ahead. Take the money. I know you need it. My poverty forces me to do this, even though I know it's wrong. Put this in any liquid you want and drink it. it, it, it if you were as strong as twenty men, it would still kill you right away. Here's the gold. Buy some food. A fine meal would do you good. Welcome home from Mantua. What did Romeo say? I never got to Mantua. I went to ask another brother to go with me. He was visiting the sick. When I found him, the health officers thought that we were in the house, infected by the plague. They would not let us leave the house. 
So, who took my letter to Romeo? Nobody. I still have it. I could not even get a messenger to return it to you. Everyone was afraid of catching the plague. Oh, this is terrible. It is important for Romeo to get the note. Friar John, go and get me an iron crowbar. Bring it to my cell right away. I'll be right back with one. Now, I must go to the Capulet tomb. Juliet will be waking up within three hours. I will hide her until I get word to Romeo. Give me the torch. Go and keep watch over those trees. If you hear anything, whistle. Sweet flower. I will put these flowers on your bridal bed. I will water them with my tears every night. Someone is coming. Who could it be? I will put out my torch and hide in the dark. Give me that axe and that crowbar. Here, take this letter. Early in the morning, give it to my father. Now, give me the light. Stand aside. Whatever happens, stay out of it. Don't try to stop me in what I'm about to do. Let me warn you that if you do peek into the tomb to see what I am doing, I'll kill you and scatter your remains across the churchyard. I will go, sir. I will not interfere. You are a true friend. Here, take this. Live and prosper. Farewell, good fellow. All the same, I will hide nearby. I don't like the way he looks. I suspect he might be doing something dangerous. You hateful tomb. You belly of death. You have gorged yourself with the dearest morsel of the earth. So I will force your rotten jaws open and cram you with more food. It is that villain, Romeo, who murdered Juliet's cousin. It is said she died of grief after that cousin's death. Here he has come to do even more harm to the dead bodies. I will stop him. Romeo, stop. What are you doing? Are you so angry that you will seek revenge even after death? You villain, I'm arresting you. You will come to me to Pris Aeschylus. You are as good as dead. That is true. And that is why I am here. Good, gentle, sir, I am desperate, man. Do not stand in my way. Go away from here. By heaven, I have more regard for your life than I do for my own. Go. Live out your life. Later you can say that a madman's mercy made you run away. Stop talking nonsense. I'm arresting you as an outlaw here. I warned you. Now it is too late. Oh no, they're fighting. I'll go and call the guards. Oh, I'm killed. If you have any mercy, open the tomb and lay me next to Juliet. I will do that for you. Let me see your face. Mercutio's relative, the noble Count Paris... What did, Balthabar, what did Balthazar say on a ride to Verona? I was too upset to listen at the time, but I think he said that Paris was supposed to marry Juliet. Did he say it? Or, or did I dream it? Or am I mad? Give me your hand, gentle Paris. Your hand, like mine. He wrote in the book of bad luck. <laughs> I will bury you in a splendid grave. A grave? Oh, no. It is, a pl is a, it is a palace, because fair Juliet lies here. Her beauty makes this tomb a banquet hall, full of light. Lie here, dead Paris, brought by me, almost a dead man myself. Oh, my love, my wife, death, which has taken the honey of your breath, has no power over your beauty. Your beauty still shows in your red lips and your cheeks. Tybalt! Is that you lying there in the grave? Oh, what, what better favor can I do than to kill myself with the same hands that killed you? Forgive me, cousin. Ah, dear Juliet, why are you still so beautiful? Shall I believe that death loves you? <laughs> and it's keeping you here in the dark for himself? For fear of that, I shall stay with you forever. I will never leave this palace of dim night again. Eyes, take your last look. Arms, take your last embrace. And lips, you doors of breath, seal with a holy kiss, an everlasting bargain with death. Come, bitter poison, dash my ship upon the rocks and end my sad journey. Here's to my love. Oh, honest druggist, your, your potion is quick. Now, with a kiss, I die. Balthazar! 
What are you doing here? I'm waiting for Romeo. How long has he been in there? For half an hour or more. Come with me into the tomb. I dare not, sir. He told me not to. Then I shall go alone. I fear the worst. As I slept under this tree, I dreamt that Romeo had another fight, and that Romeo killed him. Romeo! What blood is this that stains the stones before this tomb? Romeo! Romeo! You're so pale! Who else? What? Paris, too? What an evil hour this is! The lady moves. Oh, dear friar, where is Romeo? I hear some noises outside. Lady, come this way. Come away. Your husband lies dead, and Paris is dead too. Come, I'll find a place for you to live with a sisterhood of holy nuns. Come, do not argue. The guards are coming. We must go right now. Go. Leave. I'm staying here. What's this? A cup in my love's hand? Poison, I see, has taken his life. Did you drink it all and leave no friendly drop to help me follow you? I will kiss your lips. Perhaps some poison remains there to help me die. Which way is it? Noise? Then I'll be quick. Oh, happy dagger! This is your sheath. Rest there and let me die. A terrible sight. Here lies Paris, dead, and Juliet bleeding and still warm. Though buried two days, she has just died. Go tell the prince. Run to their families. We found Romeo's servant outside. Keep him here till the prince arrives. Here is a friar, sighing and weeping. He was leaving the churchyard. Very strange. Hold the friar, too. What is going on here? Prince, here lies Count Paris dead, and Romeo dead, and Juliet dead before, still warm and newly dead. Found out, find out how this happened. Here is a friar and Romeo's servant. They have a tool that can open tombs. Oh, heavens! Wife, see how our daughter bleeds! This dagger has lost its way. It should be in Romeo's back, not in my daughter's heart. The sight of death is like a bell that calls me to my own grave. My wife died tonight. When Romeo was sent away, she died of grief. What more sorrow must I face in my old age? Look, you shall see for yourself. Oh, my dear boy, I thought I taught you better manners than this. A father should go to the grave before his son. We must find out what has happened. Then we can all mourn together. I, uh, I can explain what has happened here. Then tell us at once what you know. Romeo, who lies dead there, was Juliet's husband. And Juliet also dead, was Romeo's loving wife. I married them, and their wedding day was also Tybalt's last day. Tybalt's death caused Romeo to be sent from Verona. Juliet cried for Romeo, not for Tybalt. When she was told she had to marry Paris, she came to me and asked for advice. She said she would kill herself if I didn't help. So, I gave her a sleeping potion, which worked just as I said. It made her appear dead. Then, I wrote to Romeo, telling him the plan. He was to meet her here and take her away when she woke up. But he never got the letter. I came to this tomb to be here when she awoke. I meant to hide her till I could send for Romeo. But when I got here just before she woke up, I found the noble Paris and true Romeo dead. She woke, and I, I begged her to leave with me. A noise scared me away. She would not come. Now she has killed herself. This is all I know. Her nurse knows all about the marriage. If what has gone wrong is my fault. Then let my life be taken before its time, according to the law. What can Balthazar add to this? I told Romeo about Juliet's death. Then he came here from Mantua. He gave me a letter for his father. He said he would kill me if I entered the tomb. Give me the letter, and I will read it. 
This letter proves that the friar told the truth. It also says that Romeo bought the poison and came here to die and lie with Juliet. Where are the enemies, Capulet and Montague? See what your hate has done. Your children have killed through love. And I have lost two relatives because I have failed to make you stop fighting. We are all punished. Montague, my brother, shake hands. This is my daughter's wedding gift from you. I can ask nothing more. I can give you more than that. I will have a statue made of her in pure gold. As long as Verona is known by that name, there shall be no one honored more than the true and faithful Juliet. And I shall do the same for Romeo. His statue shall be placed by Juliet's. They are the victims of our hate. Morning brings with it a gloomy peace. The sun, in sorrow, will not show its face. Go now, and talk more of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned and some punished. Never was a story full of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo.